Home Depot opened its first store 40 years ago. Think of what was going on then. You had recession, you had long gas lines. Yet Home Depot co-founders Bernie Marcus and Ken Lingo joining us exclusively to reflect on all that to say they were different times. That was the middle of a recession, long gas lines oh, again. Bad times. Jimmy Carter. Bad times. Neil, we couldn't get a banker to give us a line of credit. We had no money. Kenny had raised $2 million. Right. Well, we were opening four stores for $2 million. What well, can't, can't be done? Right. We had no money. Uh, and no bank, no bank in Atlanta would give us money. Kenny's wow. friends all over in Chicago. We in had fact, a, one member of the board, his father was the biggest banker in Dallas. Murray and Cox. his father was an investor Murray and wouldn't Cox. give us a line what of credit. What didn't they like about it? No credit. We had, what are you talking about? Yeah, no. We had an idea. That's all we had. And right. the concept didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. And we got the investors to give us letters of credit that we were then able to use to go to Bernie's friend, Rip Fleming, at Security Pacific Bank. So we took the LCs, and we got, we got a $3 million line of credit. All right. So you open up these stores. You were handing out dollar bills outside, right, yep. to get them to come in. Yep. And uh, did that bring much traffic? No, because they left the ad out of the paper. <laughs> you, if yeah. anything can go wrong, it went wrong. Mm -hmm. And actually, it was AJC. It was a double truck, which is double paid. Right. And they just left it out. And rather than So you call, look like a fool out there, right? Well, we, no, tried, had, we went yeah, out on the highway <laughs> to hand money out. People didn't even know who we were. And so, but I called the, the, the publisher of the paper, and I didn't scream at him. I just said, yeah. you just put a knife through my heart. And the guy said, why? And I said, you left the ad out. And he said, oh, my God. And, but from that, he gave us the back of the first page yeah. for three years. Which you couldn't oh, buy. That's, that's gold. You couldn't buy. I mean, so. But you would be relentless too, right? You'd police people leaving Home Depot in, in those days, and if you, they didn't have anything, you'd want to know what, what was going well, on. Well, we would look. If, if I, I used to spend my time outside the store when people would leave, I'd say, What didn't you find? And they'd say, Well, you didn't have such and such. I'd say, Give me your address. I'll have it at your house tomorrow or tonight. And I would run out to a competitor. Buy it, knock the price down by a third, Incredible. and then put it back in the store. Make sure the store had it at that price. Hey, listen, when you start a business, this this Home Depot is probably the poster child for capitalism. When I heard hear Bernie Sanders talking about socialized, uh, this could never happen in a socialized city. Never happened. I mean, but it happened in a pretty difficult economic period. Well, Interest in rates worse, were 21 percent, in right? In the worst. So you can. So why you, did you choose then to do this? Because he got fired. I understand <laughs> that. He didn't choose. It was fate. <laughs> no, he we got didn't, fired. We didn't know Jimmy Carter was going to be in the White House. But you, you, you knew what you were dealing with in the environment. Did you ever say, all right, well, maybe we have to postpone this till we're out of this recession, no, out no, of these long no, lines? No, never, never, really? never. No, because people needed product. People still had to build houses. People still had to fit the pl fix plumbing. And by the way, we started the do as yourself craze That's in right. America. That's right. In America, and that was a big deal. But did you know and that was, was coming at the time? But there was, was something else. <clears throat> because of where the world was, <clears throat> we were able to get leases from J.C. Penney, which was here then on 6th Avenue, right up the street. We were able to get leases on four stores in Atlanta. And Treasure Island was one of them. Yeah. Right? Well, that's what they were. They were shutting them. They like. were shutting them. They yeah. were shutting the four Treasure Islands. And part of the deal was, remember this, we, we gave, we were going to give uh, J.C. Penney warrants as part of the rent. Wow. For 10% of the company. Wait a minute. So now, at the, two days before the closing, I'm calling them. I'm saying, hey, we've got to paper the warrants. We, and the guys, ah, they're a nuisance. We don't want them. Keep them. Whoa. Yeah, Security Pacific Bank also didn't take any warrants. Oh, my God. No. Idiotic but, moves. No, it wasn't idiotic. You have to understand. At the time, that. right? Yeah. It was... This, if you looked at it and you knew the business, you would say this is a failure. There's no way they, uh -huh. su they could succeed. How do you sell product at a third less than everybody else? How do you have qualified people on the floor of the right. store? How do you have an inventory <coughs> that's five times what everybody else has? But how did you, you do that? I mean, I mean, obviously there were bigger competitors volume. that could have crushed you like volume. a bug. Bigger volumes per box. But you didn't have volume. Well, we expected it. Okay, but in the, in the beginning, you had a lot of empty boxes because they No, we didn't. We only had on the shelves to make it look like oh, you had a lot of product. But that was inventory. 
Okay. Yeah, but but we had no competitors really. No. There was nobody. I that, think they were ignoring you. They didn't think you'd. Oh, well, they didn't think it would work. Uh, Sears, yeah. Ro Sears Roebuck was the competitor at that right. time. Is that right? Yeah. They were the biggest competitor. Yeah. And I remember I used to follow them on retail analysts at, at Wall Street, and uh, yeah, I would get up and I say, look, we're a gnat on their rear ends, and just ignore us. And yeah, they did. They did ignore us, which you was really good. Every visionary we, we, company starts out that way, being dismissed. By we itself. offered Kroger. 10% of the company for $2 million after we'd gotten started. Wow. They came back and said, you can't have low prices, high service, and wide assortment and still make money. That was it. They walked away. They didn't do the deal. But that was their right. reason. Well, look, don't they? Microsoft is the same way. People Absolutely. didn't believe. And they could have owned the company, yeah. IBM. Right. They didn't. They, they, gave, them, they gave them the technology. They, they, so, look, we had the same thing. If you were starting an environment like we have today, much lower taxes, mm -hmm. much more stable economic environment. What do you think? Uh, first of all, it would be very difficult today. Yeah. Uh, the government is really working against you. You know, one of the things Kenny and I were talking about in the car coming up here, when we, before we went public, I made a commitment to people that I hired. I said, look, if we're successful and we have a public offering, every single person working here is going to get stock in the company. Mm -hmm. And Arthur and I limited our salaries. Right. We took no options. We are the only company is I know right? of. What? No options. We no. never took an option. No. Nope. Ever, ever. We, I could be as rich as Warren Buffett today, but I would rather have every assistant manager, every manager, secretaries. You never paid the minimum wage, at the, right? Never, Back never then, once never. paid the minimum yeah. wage. No. Never no, once. never minimum wage. But every single one of them. Look, we had a great story today. Right. There was a guy working for us 36 years, and he spoke to Craig Manier, and he said, you know, I'm retiring. And Craig said, well, why are you retiring? He says, the truth of the matter is right. my dividends are worth more than my salary. I make more, of my make dividends. more money on dividends than he was on well, his no, salary. Well, no, you made a lot of millionaires there. But, you know? by, but by the way, a cornerstone of our belief from day one was the people in the store. We always believed that if this was going to work, we had to not only get the right people, we had to motivate them. And after we got them, we had to respect them. And you did. And we do. You did. And we do. And you do. Um, let me, uh, the reason why I mentioned it is you, you're, you're both billionaires. You've had great success. And now there's this push from the Billionaires Club. You probably heard this mm -hmm. group that wants higher taxes. And they include George mm -hmm. Soros and Chris Hughes, the Facebook mm -hmm. co-founder, host of others, um, even uh, those who are descendants of family mm -hmm. empires, Abigail mm -hmm. Disney, uh, Pritzker Simmons, you know all these people. And they said, you know, tax us more. What do you think of that? Well, um, they trust the government more than I do. Right. Um, I can't tell you how much money we've given away. My foundation actually has given away over $2 billion. I would rather give it away than have some congressman give it away. Uh, we've built hospitals. We built the Georgia Aquarium, which That's you right. happen to That's be right. at. Uh, we have cardiac units, stroke units. This guy, Jim. Uh, Kenny, Dome Medical Center. NYU. Center. Look, we do better with our money than the government's going to. Why would I want the government to have anything they touch? But do you get annoyed when you have big old targets, not no. specifically on you, but that the rich, all these uh, d Democratic candidates, to a man or woman, they single out guys like you as this is what has happened to capitalism. It's yeah, unfair. But, but wait a minute. What has happened to capitalism? Two, three, four of us, all humble origins, every one of the four of us, his father was a plumber. Enormously, a enormously successful financially. And look at what we've done. But I've got a different point. I have no trouble paying more taxes, provided it's used to redeem the futures of the young people today. What the hell am I doing? What's Bernie doing getting Social Security? We shouldn't get a check. Fix it. Make that happen. But it doesn't happen. Why? No, because they haven't got the guts in Washington Kenny, to do what they Kenny, it's, but, it's worse. But Bernie Sanders is out today with a plan that will tax Wall Street trades. Pennies on the dollar, but it's a start to pay for, among other things, college debt and maybe free college down the road. Well, look, uh, don't bring up Bernie Sanders because that's a red flag in front of me. Because he's the enemy of every entrepreneur that's ever going to be born in this country and has been born in the past. Well, he represents about half the candidate's views on well, this. Well, we don't have our kids today don't learn uh, Western civilization. They don't learn history. History repeats itself. You see things happening over and over again. Uh, so if you, you became president, what would you guys do? 
uh, me, probably move to Australia. <laughs> you can't you know, take that aquarium. You know, well, what could he do? I mean, he can't do anything to us. He's going to affect my grandchildren. Uh -huh. And uh, let me just bring up one thing. Sure. Uh, Bernie Sanders talks about socialized medicine. My foundation now is working on one issue, and that is taking care of these veterans, kids who fought in Afghanistan, Iraq. You know that 20 a day commit suicide, 20 every single day. What is Bernie Sanders doing about that? Why did he shut his mouth and do something about these kids? They go to the Veterans Administration, they can't take care of it. The proof of the pudding is 20 a day of committing suicide. If, if it was measles, mm -hmm. the CDC, <clears throat> the world would be in an uproar. But it's, it's the kids that put their lives on the line right. that are treated so badly. Uh, I didn't hear one single candidate talk about it. By the way, Trump is fully supportive of this. And you know he's the... He's done some things. They can fire people that have done the wrong thing at the, at, say, at the Veterans Administration. The Veterans Administration is what what medical care is going to be like in the United States if Bernie Sanders is. Well, let me. You mentioned the president. You know, you know, Ken, let me get your take on this. Good. The president has said, "If I'm not reelected, expect a market crash." What did you think of that? I don't know about that, but let me go back to Bernie Sanders for a minute. Believe it or not, Chavez in Venezuela came to power through a democratic process. If the people in America today, the fellows out here with the hard hats on, if they want to know what the future holds for them following Bernie Sanders, go to Cuba, go to Venezuela, go to Russia, go to Eastern Europe, guess what? It doesn't work. It never worked. The average Venezuelan last year lost 34 pounds. There's no food down there. And look, they had a lot of riches to begin with. It was the wealthiest, one of the wealthiest countries in the Southern Hemisphere. It was sitting on a huge pool of oil. No, it's the latest example, but well, I, but I, right, I so do want to say, but, but uh, Donald Trump has said, these are the cast of characters that they replace you. This is what you have to look forward to. Uh, but he had also said that Wall Street would be so stunned by the alternative that it would that it would crash. So it I, I have learned after 60-some years in the business, don't guess the market. The market will do what the market wants to do. I hope to God, for the sake of all of us, Trump's wrong. Right. On the other hand, I think when you change the structure of what we are as a nation, it's a risky game. And I think there's a good shot that we'll have a severe economic downturn if, in fact, the American people go in that direction. It's what happened in Venezuela. All right, Ken Lagone and uh, Bernie Marcus. Uh